one of the world's most special piano players I ever heard and you ever hear. And that ain't just an opinion, that's a fact. And with a hellfire band to back him up, let's give a hand to Mr. Harry Van Walls. <laughs> Harry Van Piano Man Waltz was born at the dawn of the jazz age and grew up immersed in rhythm and blues. He went on to become one of the greatest pianists in the genre, not so quietly setting the stage for rock and roll. Born Harry Eugene Van on August 24, 1918 in Middlesbrough, Kentucky, he would later take the name Walls from his stepfather. His mother taught piano in schools and started him playing at age six. The family moved to Charleston, West Virginia in 1927. From an early age, he played piano in his mother's church there, where he began playing while stand-up dancing. It was in his late teens that Walls first heard the blues of Jay McShann and began sitting in at local Charleston clubs. One of his first performances was at the Gypsy Tea Room in Charleston's infamous Fry's Alley. The scene was vibrant with frequent all-night sessions that helped Walls develop his own style. Soon he had his own radio show on WCHS AM, sponsored by Charleston's Buttercrust Bread Company. His first touring gig was with Cal Greer's band in the early 1940s, playing the circuit of mining towns in southern West Virginia. When Greer's band split up, Walls moved to Columbus, where he played Barrel Houses and American Legion clubs as Van Walls and his blues band. It was there in 1948 that sax player and Atlantic Records scout Frank Florshow Cully convinced Walls to come to New York and sign with the newly formed Atlantic Records label. At the time, Atlantic's studio was small, with just an upright piano and an orange crate for a seat. The band backed Cully on numerous sides, including Coleslaw and the Barrel House Jam of After Hour Session that featured Walls and Cully rapping off each other. In 1951, blue shouter Big Joe Turner scored his first big hit with Chains of Love, which credited Walls and label owner Ahmet Erdogan as co-writers. Walls' melodic counterpoint to Turner's soulful vocals makes the recording magical. Change of love has tied my heart to you. Walls' distinctive playing stands out on many of Atlantic's biggest hits from the early 1950s, including The Clover's One Mint Julep, Lori Tate's Anytime, Anyplace, Anywhere, and Ruth Brown's 5, 10, 15 Hours. Just give me five, 10, 15 hours of your love. In 1954, he joined the Philadelphia-based Night Riders. The band was made up of seasoned pros from the R&B circuit who wanted to capitalize on the new rock and roll sound. They toured the East Coast in Canada and released a remarkable array of material including Women in Cadillacs, Got Me a Six Button Benny, and Pretty Plaid Skirt. Chicken Backs, the Knight Rider's final release in 1963, is a great soul shaker and one of the first tracks to feature Walls on organ. He like a ham, but I like them chicken backs. In 1955, during an extended stay at Montreal's Esquire Show Club, an R&B hotspot, Walls met Ruth Pilevsky. The two were married in 1963, and when the Knight Riders broke up, Walls settled down in Montreal, where he formed Captain Van and the Pirates. By the 1970s, popular tastes had changed, and he was forced to tour as a duo playing taverns and legion halls. 
In 1985, Atlantic issued a box set of older material which put Walls back in the spotlight, but he had all but quit playing and dropped out of sight. Tracked down by R&B enthusiasts, he was persuaded to record again. The result was 1987's They Call Me Piano Man. In 1990, he appeared in New York with his former piano student, Mac Rebenack, a.k.a. Dr. John. A few months later, the two performed together again at the Montreal International Jazz Festival. As a result, Walls was booked at numerous jazz and blues festivals. In 1997, Walls was recognized by the Rhythm and Blues Foundation, receiving a Pioneer Award for his contributions to the genre. The same year, he released his last album, In the Evening. Might play slow, baby, but I sure do play long. In 1993, filmmaker Stephen Morris began filming the documentary Van Piano Man Walls, The Spirit of R&B. Before the completion of the film, Walls died of cancer in Montreal in 1999, playing piano in the cancer ward almost until the day of his death. The film premiered in Montreal in 2013. Wall's son, Winston Walls, became one of the world's greatest Hammond B3 players. Winston played in Charleston off and on for decades. He passed away in 2008. West Virginians can be proud that Harry Van Walls, along with 2007 West Virginia Music Hall of Fame inductee Johnny Johnson, were two of the premier architects of rock and roll piano. Rockin' man. Yeah, my knees start to rockin'. And I love to start to rockin'. Yeah, my boogie, boogie, boogie country.